I hope if you're suffering from an autoimmune, you genuinely think about trying this. I found out about it through Michaela Peterson because she started with Juvenile RA and that's what led me down this path. If you're suffering, I promise you will not regret giving up the things you want to eat for what we need to eat for the feeling better you get out of it. Hey everybody, it has been about 54-ish weeks since I did the start of carnivore and I wanted to go over some of my autoimmune stuff. I wanna talk first about where I was at, how things are going and about my most recent rheumatology visit. I've had issues with my rheumatic it diseases from the time I was a teenager. I have RA, scleroderma and fibromyalgia. About 18 is when it hit me the worst. My symptoms were kind of a range of things. I had a lot of Raynaud's issues. That's where the blood flow decreases. Usually in the hands can be the feet too. It causes a lot of pain. I had the hypersensitivity with my skin to where literally just the wind blowing on my skin would hurt. I'd have rashes. I would have just kind of like these scaly spots pop up on my skin. No, it was not psoriasis. Um, I mean, the list went on, the joint pain, I'd have nodules on my fingers. It got to the point where I had to stop using a pen or pencil to write because my hands hurt so bad. Typing for work was impossible. And honestly, the biggest thing was the pain limiting my mobility. You know, being 360 pounds when I started this, it is expected to have pain, but I wasn't that much. I was probably only 50 pounds maybe 40 pounds overweight when I was a later on in my teenage years. And that definitely was not an impact or very small impact on where I was at. And that just means my rheumatic issues plus everything else caused a lot of turmoil for day to day tasks. By the time I was 32, I was having to use a walker because of the joint pain and everything else that went along with it. Then I started carnivore. I can tell you within the first month, I noticed big improvements. Now, you have to also remember, I started with about 17 comorbidities when I started this. I was a type 2 diabetic. I had fatty liver. I had, you know, elevated triglycerides. The list went on and on. I also have what is called HS. It is hydro something, superlative something. I can't ever say it properly. I'll have it down in the description if you're interested. And they suspect that could also have an impact with autoimmune as well. I can tell you with my HS though, it's gotten better too. Anywho, started it within a month notice better. The Raynaud's stopped completely. I mean, it would get to the point where it would be just, it was random fingers that it would kill my hands because the blood flow would cut off and my hands would be cold all the time, gone within a month. The hypersensitivity, sensi the hypersensitivity on the skin, gone within a few months. The scaly patches and stuff, trace, almost nothing. The nodules that I would get on my hand, oh my gosh, they almost disappeared. I will say now, when I do have what I consider flare ups, I will have small little ones on my hands and the pain, my goodness, the pain's about 95% better. It is night and day difference from hardly being able to move around and walk, just doing daily tasks, doing the dishes. As I said before, typing on the computer, terrible. But now I have no limitations almost. If I do very heavy lifting, like working out and things like that, I will notice some temporary joint pain above and beyond what should be normal for that. But it goes away very quickly. It, I, I cannot explain to you how much better I feel. Honestly, the best thing you can do is go watch some of my beginning videos to the ones now, and you can just see not just the weight difference, obviously, but that my tone of voice, how I'm speaking, articulating things, and just how I feel. It is night and day. So I'm feeling much better, obviously. Let's talk about my rheumatology appointment. I had a rheumatologist when I first moved to Washington State a few years ago. She did blood work, so I have a baseline. Then I <laughs> decided not to go back to that rheumatologist because 
because when I went to go see her for the first time, she looked at me and said, it's just because you're fat. That's your problem is it's just because you're fat. And I told her, I was like, listen, I've been to the Mayo Clinic. I've had this issue from the time I was, you know, a teenager. I'm not imagining this. It's not just my weight. Yes, my weight will impact it. I understand that. Did a ton of blood work. Came back the next visit and she's like, oh, by the way, here, here's what I'm going to diagnose you with. The fibromyalgia, scleroderma, and RA. No mention that. She completely blew me off. And if I hadn't pressed her to still do the blood work, she would have literally just sent me on my way and said bye. Despite having my previous medical records. Anyways. So I went to a different rheumatologist. Finally, it took forever. But last week, I went to a new one. And she was super sweet. Both her and her physician's assistant, super sweet. They did the entire battery of tests again. And I think they just do this every time you switch a rheumatologist. I had my anti centromere which is, and ANA, which is indicative of limited scleroderma. I already knew that, thankfully. There are different types of scleroderma. There is the one that I have, which is more limited to skin less about affecting the lungs and heart which is a very good thing my ra factor was right on the cusp but coming to find out she told me that your ra factor will actually fluctuate even though it wasn't elevated this time she said it could just be i'm not in a flare-up because i really asked her if we could drop the ra diagnosis and she wants me to go back in six months and we'll reassess then as far as the fibromyalgia honestly Fibro to me is a, we're not really sure we're just going to attach this because we can't explain it kind of thing. But the pain, the exhaustion, all of that for the reason they gave that to me, I just don't experience it anymore. I mean, I, I don't. It's crazy. And by the way, you can look at all this blood work. All I've posted my old blood work and I will post my new blood work and you can kind of compare for yourself like where I was at where I am now because they did a ton ton of autoimmune testing because there's a lot more specific tests now so initially they thought I had lupus at the Mayo they thought I had lupus but then the anti-centromere test came along and boom here we go now it's pointing to this instead of this because I don't have lupus that is where I'm at I'm at a very very different place than where I started and I am excited to continue this journey because here's the thing I still have like a hundred ish pounds to go what is my life going to look like when I can get the weight off so whatever inflammation that's left from the weight how am I going to feel then am I going to feel like 120 percent better I do hope so I appreciate you guys taking the time to listen I hope if you're suffering from an autoimmune you genuinely think about trying this I found out about it through Michaela Peterson because she started with Juvenile RA and that's what led me down this path. If you're suffering, I promise you will not regret giving up the things you want to eat for what we need to eat for the feeling better you get out of it. I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.